Holiday Greetings from Channel 4, WTAE-TV, Pittsburgh. Regularly scheduled programming will not be seen at this time so that we may bring you the following ABC Sports Exclusive. For the Pittsburgh Panthers, this has been a season in which they might well have defended their National Collegiate Football Championship with a little more luck. Like not having quarterback Matt Cavanaugh break his wrist in the opening game against Notre Dame. When Cavanaugh was hurt, Pitt led the Irish, but finally lost the game very late, 19 to 9. Snow and cold marred the season finale as the Panthers lost to a very tough Penn State, 15 to 13, another one of those contests that could have gone either way. The Crimson Tigers stage one of football's most dramatic turnarounds. Coming from 3-6-2 and in 76 to 8-2-1 and in 77, quarterback Steve Fuller and wide receiver Jerry Butler, key people of the Tigers' turnaround and their first full bid in 18 years. And tonight from Jacksonville, Florida, on a cool December evening, the 33rd Gator Bowl game, matching the Pitt Panthers and the Clemson Tigers, the first time they have met on the football field in their long athletic history. The Gator Bowl is a wall-to-wall -wall sellout and then some, with Clemson partisans grabbing every ticket offered every ticket they could find anywhere and why not every reason to believe this could be a very close and exciting college football game this abc sports exclusive brought to you by lowen brow when you want the taste of a truly great beer there's really only one tonight let it be lowen brow by the all-new 1978 chevrolets now at your chevrolet dealers everywhere and by westinghouse and the 140,000 westinghouse employees worldwide and one tie, ranked ninth on the coaches' poll at UPI, 10th by Associated Press. A relatively quiet crowd as the Panthers come in, 11,000 tickets sold in Pittsburgh or among Pittsburgh partisans for this game. The bulk of the tickets for this game bought by Crimson Partners and then listen as the Tigers come in. with a record of 8-2 and 1, just like Pittsburgh, ranked 10th by the coaches' poll, 11th by Associated Press. Well, I'll tell you one thing, the folks from South Carolina are going to have themselves a good time tonight. Hello, everybody, I'm Keith Jackson, along with Frank Broyles, former football coach, University of Arkansas, and a very happy new year to all of you. We're going to help to get your party started tonight. But I think a game that'll be very exciting, Frank. Two teams that match up very well. The similarity, Keith, begins at quarterback, Fuller and Cavanaugh. Two great athletes that can do it all. They can run and pass with equal ability. They can make the big play. They can turn a bad play into a good play. In essence, they're just a coach's dream, and they, in all likelihood, will be the dominating forces in this game tonight. If there is to be a difference between these two teams, it might rest with Pittsburgh's passing attack against Clemson's defensive secondary. Clemson coaches say they lack the great speed in the secondary, and this will force them to play a zone pass defense conservatively. They will defend against the deep pass and do the best they can against the short, which could be a deciding factor in the ball game. The starting tailback for the Clemson Tigers most of the season is not here. He did not make the trip to the Gator Bowl because of discipline problems. Frank Broyles, you've had some problems with that same kind of a thing at Arkansas where three starters have been grounded and will miss the Orange Bowl. What's the circumstance now? They will not play in the ball game, Keith. And they have uh, sent a telegram to our players and coaches wishing them the very best, and we are pleased about this. But I think all coaches will be pleased that the judge did not tamper with the coach's discretion to select his squad and decide who is going to play in the game, and we are pleased about that. Enthusiasm here at the Gator Bowl tonight is so thick you just can hardly believe the intensity of it. The bulk of the people sitting in the Gator Bowl are wearing the orange of Clemson, but we'll see what happens as the Panthers and Tigers put it on the tee. Clemson Tigers. Pitt will be wearing the white. Clemson, the home team, wearing the orange shirt. And this is the first time they've ever met on the football field. Pittsburgh will kick off, and Clemson will receive the officials tonight's game, all Southeastern Conference. 
Referee is James Hartley. The umpire is Bobby Boylston. The line judge, a linesman is Dave Scobie. Line judge Henry Hare. Field judge John Grace and Gordon Pettis is the back judge. So the men in striped shirts will have themselves a busy evening as we get the game ready to go on real grass. It is very dry. It has been very cold down in Florida. I'm sure many of you who might be locked in colder climes uh, do not consider the temperature of 35 or 40 degrees very cold, but it is in Florida. The temperature right now, though, comfortable. 57 degrees with a 10 mile an hour wind out of the east to the south and uh, no threat of rain. It is overcast but it is sprinkled a little bit during the course of the day and the weathermen tell us there will be no threat of rain during the course of tonight's ball game. So the Clemson Tigers will be receiving with Willie Jordan a junior out of Griffin Georgia scheduled to be the man to return the kick. Willie Underwood will go back with him, number 20. He's a freshman out of Fort Payne, Alabama. And there they go. 20 is Underwood, and 5 is Willie Jordan. Doing the kicking off for the Pitt Panthers will be number 1, Dave Trout. He is a freshman from Mount Pleasant, Pennsylvania. A lot of freshmen going to be involved in this game tonight. A lot of sophomores. Clemson is primarily a junior team, whereas Pittsburgh has a lot of seniors, and they have a lot of freshmen and sophomores. Keith Jackson along with Frank Broyles, and this game is ready to go. Crowd over talking as Pittsburgh takes their time, makes sure everything is ready. Glenn Meyer standing there as number 42. Looks like he's broken a strap. Uh, isn't that something? Come all the way in practice and then break a strap before the kickoff. <laughs> all right, here we go. From the 40 with the wind out of the end zone. So you get the feeling off the kickoff that the adrenaline is truly flowing in tonight's game. Both teams with records of 8-2-1. and one. The common opponent, Notre Dame, between the two. Pittsburgh was leading Notre Dame when Kavanaugh went down, as we noted in our tees, beginning our program tonight. They went on to lose to Notre Dame late in the game, 19-9. Clemson had Notre Dame come calling at Death Valley in South Carolina and played them very tough, again losing very late in the contest 21-17. Here's the first play of the ball game as Steve Fuller sets the Clemson Tigers. Number four is the quarterback. Weddington in motion. The pitch goes back to the tailback for the Clemson Tigers. Lester Brown, the sophomore out of Myrtle Beach, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, is hit right along the line of scrimmage. Now let's have a look at these young people playing in the backfield. Mr. Fuller, Lester Brown, who just carried the ball, number 44. Ken Calicut is the fullback. He's number 22. Rick Weddington, who went in motion, is the flanker, number 12. Jerry Butler, uh, number 15, the wide receiver, and Anthony King, 88, is the tight end. Jerry Butler, the leading receiver on the Clemson team. He's flanked wide to the left to the open side of the field. It's second down and just a little more than 10. As Fuller rolls and throws, and the pass is incomplete. The pass was intended for Dwight Clark, number 30, who had come in on the preceding play. The offensive front, Jimmy Weeks, is at left tackle. He's a 231-pounder. Steve Kenny at 241. Jeff Bostick at 221 at center. His brother, Joe Bostick, 258 at guard. Lacey Brumley, 275 pounds on the right side of the offensive line. Cliff Perry is in the lineup. Cliff Ray is in the lineup now for Clemson on third down, a little bit more than 10 from just inside their own 20-yard line, and Fuller hands to the tailback. And Lester Brown gets it up across the 20 for the 21. He's cut down by Jerry Boyarski, the middle guard for the Pittsburgh defenders, and the Panthers force Clemson now into punt formation, and they should come out of this with very good field position because the punt will go directly into a wind that's gusting up to 10, 12, maybe 15 miles an hour. The punt is David Sims, who has been struggling with a pulled hamstring. It is not a particularly good punt, but it gets a decent roll, goes across midfield, and rolls dead at the Pittsburgh 47-yard line. It's 33 yards. It would have been much shorter had it not taken a bounce upfield. And so the Pittsburgh Panthers' first defensive possession will come at very good field position, the nose of the ball almost touching their own 47-yard line. Pittsburgh is wearing the white shirts and will have the ball for the first time with Matt Cavanaugh settling in at quarterback. Elliot Walker and uh, Fred Jacobs will be the setbacks and Randy Rudershan will be the wide receiver. He's way out to the right side and we've got two men in motion here now. And 
that's got to get all the laundry in the world because we had Gordon Jones and Brett Jacobs uh, or Elliot Walker both running around all over the place and there's penalty flags all over the field. Matt Cavanaugh, number 12, is the quarterback. Jacobs, uh, number 44, is a halfback. And Elliot Walker, number 34, is the fullback. Randy Rudershan, uh, the flanker. Gordon Jones is the split in. And Steve Gostad is the tight end. And he's the money man in the difficult situation. So, obviously, we've got a legal procedure. It's got to be a little disconcerting, Frank Walls. On the first play of the ball game, you look out there's these two people running around. That will shock any football coach. And the Pittsburgh coaches, Keith, told me today that they had planned to use a lot of men in motion, different formations. They felt like they were too basic against Penn State, and it could have cost them the ball game. Wide open attack tonight for Pittsburgh. Well, Pittsburgh has been whistled 87 times this season for 824 yards. It's on top of 59 fumbles, and they lost 29. So they have, in fact, made their share of mistakes and survived most of them. Is back now near the 42-yard line, where it's first down and 15. This time they've got their act together as Jones goes in motion. Kavanaugh snaps the ball to Jones as he stopped for a moment and then broke it upfield, crosses midfield to the 49 of Clemson. The offensive front now for the Pitt Panthers, Matt Carroll is at one tackle, number 77, 255, Jim Bowie at guard, Tom Rizzoza is the big man at center, 235, George Link, 247 at guard, Mark May, a freshman, 270 pounder at the right tackle spot, Art Portnick has been sick and he's lost a lot of weight and may not play, maybe a little bit late in the game if the opportunity presents itself. In motion, it is Jones again, Kavanaugh hands the ball inside to Jacob, the fullback, and he hits from the 49 to about the 47, maybe the 46-yard line, so it's going to be enough third down and short yard. Pittsburgh coaches also felt that uh, Clemson was so strong defensively that they needed to get them out of their basic defense. Uh, otherwise, they felt like they could shut down their offense, and a man in motion is used to limit the defense into only one coverage in particular. There you saw the names of the Clemson defensive unit as they set up now, trying to hold Pittsburgh on third down and three. From just outside the Clemson 46, Kavanaugh options, he's got a first down. Matt Kavanaugh, who's playing at 219 pounds right now, the senior quarterback, the heaviest he's been, and it's not a result of his uh, being heavy because he spent too much time at the surface table. He just simply is now beginning to fill out the frame that he brought to Pittsburgh. The coach has brought to my attention that probably no other Heisman Trophy candidate ever worked on a jackhammer two summers in a row like Mr. Kavanaugh did. I met him today and I thought he was a linebacker or a tackle. He's a nice fellow. Going well and always enjoyed his company. It's first down just inside the Clemson 40. Tigers with a six-man front. The pass is away. The pass is complete to Elliott Walker. He's home free. Touchdown. A 39-yard bullet from Kavanaugh to Walker coming out of the backfield. Clemson gambling. We're blitzing on the quarterback. Kavanaugh's got the pop away, and it was we were talking about earlier, the speed of their receivers against their secondary was very evident on that particular play. A lot of people think that's where the decision will ultimately come from, is Pitt's passing game against the Clemson secondary. Mark Schubert will try for the extra point out of the hold of Tom Usick. Schubert, a sophomore from Springdale, Pennsylvania, hits it on the nose, and it is good. And so with 11.50 to go in the first quarter of play, the Pitt Panthers have taken a 7 0 lead over Clemson. Another look at the Pittsburgh touchdown and watch the movement coming toward the Kavanaugh. There was a blitz on and it was wide open when Elliott Walker got it, Frank. The reason it was open, uh, the linebacker blitz and they were lined up in the double wing and no one was in position to cover Walker as he just broke right into the secondary. So now Clemson's got to hitch themselves up and get it going. The place is just loaded with orange. I was told that some of the people up in South Carolina, the Clemson partisans, paid a full year's dues to join the Gator Bowl uh, Association so they could get so tickets. They could get tickets. Yeah. Chief, most coaches in a big ball game like this would like to kick off first, in particular if there's a win. Clemson had the unfortunate task of trying to move the ball early. Trout hits it. It'll go deep into the end zone. Willie Jordan will bring it out, and he's about five yards deep in the end zone, and he's out to the 20, and maybe across it as he goes down in a big pile. So the Tigers will take it over. First down.
just beyond the 20-yard line. The old General Nalen theory was let the other team have it on their 20 rather than you take it on your 20 if you can. The Pittsburgh defense lines up tonight with a freshman in there at middle guard, Jerry Boyarski. Dave Logan, however, is healthy again, and he's had some very good practices here in Jacksonville. So here go the Tigers now. Steve Fuller setting at quarterback and coming down the line on the option. He's a big fella. He weighs 199 pounds, stands 6'4", turns it upfield, and gets it out to about the 25 for a four-yard pickup. Jeff Delaney coming over along with Hugh Green to make the tackle. The Pittsburgh defensive unit up front, Dave DeCicio, 35, Silvestri is 90, Boyarski is 68, Randy Holloway, the All-American, number 70 at tackle, and Hugh Green, the freshman at defensive end. The linebackers are Jeff Belusi and Al Chesley. Defensive secondary, a very good one, J.C. Wilson, Leroy Felder, great cornerbacks, Bob Jury and Jeff Delaney. And Fuller rolls to throw. He gets pressure, gets away from it. His pass is complete to his tight end, Anthony King. And King is up across the 30, and he's got a first down for the Clemson Tigers. It was Dave DeCicio, 35, who had a shot at him in the backfield. Fuller was just dropping back and had the rush. You can see 35 had the blitz on. He scrambled away from him very much poised to hit the receiver for the first down. A very critical one. Pelosi getting the man. The receiver, as you look at Susie O'Donoghue, the Gator Bowl queen, it's first down, 32-yard line for the Crimson Tigers. And Fuller rolls it out. He delivers it. The pass is complete to Jerry Butler, and Butler is down at the Pittsburgh 45-yard line, first down. Jerry Butler. That's a 22-yard gain, and he's the leading receiver on the Clemson team. He has great speed. He, he just turns in to the inside, and the linebacker was rushing the pass. Coach Johnson had the linebacker rushing and containing the defensive coach at Pittsburgh. He's wide open. The ball's right on target. Butler can run a 4-3 in the 40. He caught 43 passes, 760 yards during the season, just short of the pit 45. First down, Dave Logan in his middle guard. Bajorski is out. Brown has the ball, and Brown gets a couple of yards the hard way as Hugh Green, number 99, and Bob Jury, number 31, bring him down. Jury is a senior out of Ivory, Pennsylvania, and Green, of course, we told you, is a freshman. And they call him the jury for the defense. Well, he intercepted 10 passes last season. Not quite those kind of numbers this year, but collectively, this is a very good defensive secondary, and the two cornerbacks in the games that I've seen him play, Wilson and Felder, are particularly effective. It is second down and eight yards to go from near the pit 43-yard line. Ball given to Brown, the tailback, and Lester hits in there to about the 41. And he takes a pretty decent pop as he comes into the stack. And getting up out of the bottom of the pile is number 55, Al Chesley, a junior from Washington, D.C. Jimmy Johnson, the defensive coordinator, who also is an Arkansas key, said they used 93 different defenses on first down during this past season. I don't know how they caught it, but they 93? did. 93? 93 is the word that he gave me today. You can see that Clemson's passing, when they have gone to it, has been quite successful, averaging better than 15 yards per completion. Third down, six. Fuller wants to go deep, does go deep. Butler! And the pass is overthrown. Jerry Butler flying downfield and slipped away from uh, J.C. Wilson, but the ball led him a little too much. Daryl Meisenheimer, a reserve <laughs> lineman, uh, had his number carved by his barber on the back of his noggin, and on top of his head is a tiger paw. True devotion. And they tell me that you can buy baby bottles and blankets with tiger paws on them these days. Right out of the Clemson Athletic Department, because their football program has been rolling along very nicely. At the 41-yard line, it is fourth down, and we'll get a field goal try now. Into the win, Obed Ariri will try the field goal out of Billy Lock's hold. It is a 57-yarder, and it's into the win. Ouch. Delayed. And game delayed here. That'll be five yards, and that'll back them up some more, and I suspect we'll bring on the putting team. Charlie Pell is the coach of the Clemson Tigers, his first year there as head coach. Jackie Sherrill is coach of the Pitt Panthers, his first year at Pittsburgh as head coach. But many of the young people on the Pittsburgh football team were recruited by Jackie Sherrill when he was an assistant to Johnny Majors at Pitt. Oops, Panthers almost jump offside. Penalty flag is thrown. The 
kick is away, and a fair catch is called by Gordon Jones, the deep man, back at the 11-yard line. So Pittsburgh did encroach a 35-yard punt, and we'll see whether or not Clemson elects to let it stand as it is. They've got the Panthers pretty well backed up back there at the 11. They should review. I believe they'll review this in all likelihood. Nope, they're going to bring it back and go for the field goal. They're going to bring Ariri back on the field. How about that 57 yarder? Ariri, during the course of the season, uh, 23 out of 24 on his extra points. He was 9 out of 17 in field goals, but he has not shown this kind of range. Oh. This would be the long one for him this season, and it would by some degree be the longest in the Gator Bowl. Into the teeth of a 10-mile-an-hour wind seems to be impossible. Maybe Bobby so. Lyle of Florida hit a 43-yarder, which is a Gator Bowl record. Well, let's just see what he can do. Never know. Do At 8.41 to go in the first quarter. yard line where Pittsburgh will have it first down. So with eight minutes and 34 seconds to play in the first quarter, Pittsburgh leading seven to nothing gets the ball back. Fear Bryant and the Crimson Tide of Alabama battle Woody Hayes, Ohio State Buckeyes in the Sugar Bowl Monday on ABC. As we look forward to that big game on Monday between Alabama and Ohio State, I might add that the shadow of Paul Bear Bryant is very obvious here in the Gator Bowl because both these head coaches, Charlie Bell and Jackie Sherrill, played for him and coached under him and revere him. From the 20, Kavanaugh hands the ball off to number 44, Fred Jacobs, a sophomore out of Cincinnati, and he's hit down by number 84, Jonathan Brooks. A junior out of Salvoa, South Carolina, and a look at Charlie Pell, the Tiger head coach for the sidelines. A gain of two, second and eight coming. Jackie Sherrill across the way, who was on Frank Royal's staff at one time at Arkansas. Second and eight. Walker in motion, handed inside, and Jacobs gets to carry it again for his second successive time. Punches up across the 25 before Rich Tootin, a junior out of Arlington, Virginia, leads the Clemson Tacklers, and Tootin, at 227 pounds, 6-1. They tell us that he bench presses 500 pounds. He spent many an hour in that weight room. I hope he spent as much time in the, on the books. Third down and four from near the 26-yard line. Sets him. Sends Rudershan in motion. That's still got it to throw it. Goes to the sidelines. He hits Jones on the numbers. And it's first down Pittsburgh. Out near the 42-yard line. A 16-yard pickup. And the Panthers will get it four more times. Here is Gordon Jones just running a simple out pattern, but the running play fake held the inside linebackers so or anybody that might have helped on the underneath coverage. No one was there right on target. So it is first down, Panthers at the 42. They lead 7-0. First quarter of play, Kavanaugh hands it to Elliott Walker. And Walker was jiggling the ball as he moved up to about the 45, but apparently held on to it. Tootin brought him down, number 51 in the orange for Clemson. Walker comes into the game needing, I believe, 28 yards tonight to go over the 1,000 mark as a running back. He is also already number two in the all-time list at uh, Pittsburgh behind, of course, Tony Dorsett. Second down, call it seven from the 45. He's close to a first down as he found some running room over the right side. Mark Kenneford, number 98, made the tackle for Clemson and then helps him up. Getting good blocking on the right side from George Lincoln, Mark May, and Steve Gostad, the tight end. Keith, the man in motion, has another useful purpose. It makes the defense change their assignments because you've changed the strength of the offensive formation, and they have to do it in a couple of seconds. Double tight end alignment now with uh, Benji Pryor going in along with Gostad. Third down, a half a yard for the first down, and it's given to Elliott Walker. And Walker 
Rodgers got the first down for Pittsburgh down around the Clemson 47-yard line. And the first time they lined up in the wishbone. In the wishbone. I was just about to say, <laughs> we're going, we anticipated not seeing the wishbone until they were in a goal line situation, but I guess that's tantamount to a goal line circumstance there. Isn't it? They were in a goal line defense. You can see the first quarter scoring, only nine points scored against Pittsburgh in the first period, and all of those by field goals in 1977. The Clemson 47 yard line. Kavanaugh gives it to Walker. Elliott's down to the 45 for about two yards, and he is stacked up by the middle of the Clemson defense. Randy Scott, number 35, the leading tackler for the Tigers during the season. He's had a lot of action. He's a junior out of Wake Cross, Georgia. One of the reasons is that this big guy, Toot, lines up there in the middle. He's so strong that he occupies a good deal of the center's attention. And when your middle guard can take and keep the center off the linebackers, then your linebackers ought to have a pretty successful year tackling people. Second down and eight. Just inside the 45. Kavanaugh drops it back to Jacobs. And a fine play by number 17, Bubba Rollins. Bubba Rollins, the rover, went right over the blocker to get his man back at midfield. That's the way you coach it, Keith. What we call kamikaze. The cornerback is forcing the option play on the lead block. He takes the blocker and the ball carrier with his kamikaze charge right there. Oh, he'll get a big plus for that from the coach. The second defensive unit is in that secondary now. Willie Jordan, Bubba Rollins, Steve Bryant stays in, but Eddie Gathers is in replacing Rex Barnes. It's Bostad in motion to the open side of the field and Kavanaugh to throw it. He loops it off to the sidelines and over the head. Of the intended receiver, Gostad, and Randy Scott, the linebacker, was coming and coming hard, and Matt had to get it off in a hurry. The rush put, put him into a bad throwing position, and he had to overthrow it. He could not get set, step forward, and release the ball properly, and it went wild out of bounds. You can see it's 7 0 Pitt. Kavanaugh on the sidelines, the wrist that was broken in the opening game, still being protected by bandages. 4.26 to go, and Willie Jordan is deep to receive the punt. Gasparovic, Joe Gasparovic is in to do the punting. He's a freshman out of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. They got 10 men up there. They're coming. And he just got it off. And it's a beauty. And it's down. Oh, and he's not going to go line up. They give it to him at the one. A 49-yard punt with the win. Leroy Felder downs it at the one-yard line. And the Crimson Tigers are definitely in the hole right now. reception of the punt by the uh, man coming downfield. Was he in the end zone? Well, it looks like he was, and it's a judgment call as to whether he had possession of the ball completely before he went into the end zone. I'm not sure exactly uh, what the rule is. And to be honest with you, I think he should have brought back to the 20. Whatever it's on the one. First down, Clemson Tigers, a place to be very careful. As Pittsburgh is leading 7 to nothing, they have not the first quarter so far in the game. Tracy Perry is in at fullback, replacing Ken Calicut now. Number 46, a 220-pound sophomore out of Roxborough, North Carolina. He carried the ball out to close to the four-yard line as we move inside four minutes to play in the first period. The Pittsburgh score coming on a 39-yard pass play, pass and run from Matt Cavanaugh to Elliott Walker. They'll keep it inside as the tailback runs it out close to the seven-yard line. And it'll bring up third down. They've got to go to the 11 for the first down. So they'll need about four yards. Lester Brown is the tailback with Tracy Perry, the fullback, and Steve Fuller is the quarterback for the Tigers. Wouldn't be surprised to see Mr. Fuller roll it out here. He, he will do it at this, on this part of the field. He has during the year. But this is a critical position to be in, having to kick in the win if it don't make the first down. You won't one very desperately if you can. Third and four. Well, he rolls to the tight side, gives to Lester Brown the tailback, and he had no chance whatsoever. Coming over there <laughs> is Hugh Green, 99, 31, uh, uh, Bob Jury, and 21, J.C. Wilson. And Wilson really put the pads on him. Hugh, Hugh Green, number 99, is destined for greatness. You can see him take on the blocker, release as the quarterback pitches, and he has that speed to get out and make the play. As the punt comes out of the end zone, and Gordon Jones, a field goal, fair 
Chase fumbles the ball, and a lot of orange shirts jumping at it. So let's see as the officials unpile it. Who's got it? 31-yard punt. Pittsburgh. So the Panthers are sitting in awfully good position now with the wind at their back. Two minutes and 56 seconds to play in the first quarter, and they've got the football first down, and it's just inside the Clemson 38-yard line. Keith. Keith, when you start with the ball inside the 40-yard line, you score about 50% of the time. Four down territory. Jones to this side. Gostad goes in motion to the open side. Kavanaugh throws to Jones, hits him at the 30, and he stumbled out of bounds. That stops the clock at 2.52 to go with Rex Varn, number 13, over there, defending for the Thompson Tigers. So that'll be a pickup of roughly eight yards, and it'll bring up a second down and a long two. Keith, there was a penalty of motion. I think the receiver moved just be uh, Jones just before the ball was snapped. He was real eager. So they'll move the football back now to the 43-yard line, where Pittsburgh will have it as they were moving, as you called it right, Coach. ABC's Wide World Sports tomorrow, the world figure skating uh, champions, will include Linda Fratiani, Ty Babylonia, Randy Gardner, Arena Rodnina, Alexander Zaitsev, and Charles Tickner, along with international sidecar racing and the freestyle skiing championships. Kavanaugh, back to throw on first and 15, throws it short, Jacobs has it, sets the screen, down the sideline, Clip. Jerry Klein tells me it may well have been uh, Matt Carroll who clipped Rich Tooten as he was pursuing the play across the field. So that play will be nullified and they'll mark off a big one against the Pitt Panthers at 15 yards. Kavanaugh is strong enough quarterback throwing the ball with the wind to make up the yardage they have. Long first, what, 25. 30. Here's the screen. It was a screen pass. You can see Kavanaugh set it up. Now he drops back after the lineman, giving the rush. Let's see if we can see the clip by number uh, seven, seven. Seven. Yeah, seven, seven. All right, it's first down and 41 to be exact for Pittsburgh from their own 41. Play is away. The pass is complete to Rudershan. They used to call him the kamikaze kid on the special teams when he risked life and limb to make plays for them. And he comes out here and makes a great catch down near the Clemson 40. It's a slant in pass and one of the toughest to defend against when you're in a zone, in a zone defense. He just goes down about six steps, breaks in behind the linebackers, and Kavanaugh anticipates where he's going to be open, and the ball is right on target. Now the ball is at the 40. They've got to go inside the 28 for the first down. Call it second down and 13 as Kavanaugh rolls to throw again. Sets up the screen the other side to Elliott Walker. Oh, he may go. Out and inside the five. Nope, they're marking at the six-yard line. Shoved out by Roy Epps, number 25. That's a 34-yard pickup from the 40 to the six, and the Panthers are fouling again. You can see it. Watch. I think the fans watch the quarterback as he sets up, looks down the field, and then drops back and lays the ball out for the zone. Now the blocking forms, and uh, Walker cuts back inside, gets into a wad of folks, and then breaks back outside and running free in the secondary. I should point out that Prezosa blocked very well on two occasions. He held the man until Kavanaugh got the pass away and then went downfield and knocked down another one. And now Kavanaugh with the first and goal to go at the Clemson six-yard line. Time is called. Keith Clemson has not double-covered the receivers on one down so far this first quarter, leaving a one-on-one -on -one coverage with the speed that uh, the receivers that Pittsburgh have is just uh, probably tough to, for any of them to, to stop them. You can see the numbers for Kavanaugh are getting pretty impressive already on only five completions. Walker has two catches for 73 yards, and he almost had his second touchdown on that play. First and goal for the Panthers at the Clemson Six. Clemson Partisans giving Kavanaugh a rough time down at that end of the field. They hand it off to Elliott Walker, and he's buried 
to by a fighting Tiger defense back on about the eight yard line. Randy Scott, number 35, Bubba Brown, 47, and Tootin, number 51, all in there. As we're inside, two minutes to play in the first quarter. Why would a team go to the wishbone uh, for one ball game? Normally, a team in the split backs has no lead blocker, and they're seeing a 6-5, no one to block the linebacker, so they want to get an extra blocker for a lead inside play. When they go into the wishbone formation, as they are now, they have Steve Harris in at fullback, flanked by Walker and Jacobs, and Kavanaugh gives it to Jacobs. And Jacobs is out of bounds at the eight-yard line. And so the Panthers are backing up now as Clemson is playing inspired defense. Steve Ryan, the free safety, pushed him out of bounds. It's a hand sweep, which is one of the best plays in the wishbone today because teams are submarining on the goal line and they get cut off. But Clemson has good pursuit from their secondary and force him out of bounds for a loss. Well, they certainly didn't get here without playing some pretty good defense. Yes. Out of the eight-yard line, it is third down and goal to go. This time they move out of the wishbone. Kavanaugh sets up the throw, goes over the middle. The pass is incomplete, intended for Willie Taylor, the flanker. And Kavanaugh went down hard. And got up just a tad gingerly, too. This was a slant in pass to Taylor coming across the middle, and Kavanaugh is trying to anticipate where he's going to be open, but he's a little bit high. I believe he might have caught the ball had it been lower. The man who put the hit on Kavanaugh was Tootin, the middle guard. So the football is sitting at the eight. It is fourth down and goal to go. We'll have a 24-yard field goal try by Mark Schubert out of Tom Usick's hole. It's good. And so with one minute and seven seconds to play in the first quarter, the Fifth Panthers have built their lead over the Clemson Tigers to a score of 10 to nothing. And that was the first real instance, I think, of aggressive defensive play by the Clemson Tigers. They were in their height with that wishbone, and they could penetrate from their gap eight and force the linebackers through into the backfield, and they did. It's new for Pittsburgh. They probably haven't scrimmaged the wishbone uh, during this off period, the off season. In looking back over the history of the Clemson Tigers during the past season, you find that they have played fundamentally eight people in their defensive secondary this year, and that when you see those kind of numbers, then you know right off that there is a weakness there. Looking down on the Gator Bowl, from the Goodyear Blip Mayflower, based in Miami, with Captain Larry Chambers aboard, our cameraman is Charlie Mitchell, and our video man is Lee Burton. And it must be a nice ride, because it's a very comfortable, soft evening here in Jacksonville. Willie Jordan and Willie Underwood and Deepest Trout comes in to hit it. He hits it high and he hits it deep, and there shouldn't be a return on this one as he runs Underwood way back into the end zone. We've got a penalty flag down on the field, so let's see what happens on that. It's a bad place for Clemson. Most of them there are blocking below the waist. The new college rule. <laughs> I lost his temper a little bit covering the kick. Personal foul against the Panthers, and that's going to give Clemson as good a field position as they've had all night, really. They've started uh, back on their 20 and 80 yards from scoring. At the 35, Pittsburgh now with five penalties in the game for 45 yards. So far in the game, Clemson has absorbed a five-yard penalty. First down for the Tigers with a minute and seven seconds to go in the first quarter from the 33rd Gator Bowl. You can see there where Clemson's offensive possession started from. Now they've got a little room. As Fuller has one lone back remaining behind him, his fullback since uh, Weddington in motion. And Steve rolls out, gets his pass off, intended for Weddington. He's got it! Beautiful throw by Fuller, and Weddington gives Clemson a first down at the Pittsburgh 18. He beat J.C. Wilson, the quarterback. 46-yard pass play. You can see that Fuller drops back. He's looking for the short man, but then the deep man comes open, and he lays it right in his arms. A beautiful throw and a beautiful catch. The man in motion, number 12, just turns down the field and runs right by number 21, Rick Weddington, the receiver, right on target. 
They mark the ball at the fifth 19 yard line. First down for the Tigers. 38 seconds to play first quarter. Fuller pitches the ball out to Lester Brown. And Brown gets a yard before he is dumped out of bounds by an angry J.C. Wilson. What do you mean picking on me like that? Of course, Hugh Green was there, and he helps too. These Pittsburgh defensive backs support the run very quickly. They're good tacklers, good speed, and they usually support it in the other team's backfield. At 33 seconds to go, first period, the ball is marked just inside the fifth 18-yard line. Go to second down and nine. Delicate and Brown lined up in the eye behind Fuller. Fuller took some time, might have called an audible, keeps it himself, and takes a pretty good hit from Al Chester, number 55, and J.C. Wilson, number 21. Another penalty, Keith. play at the line offside Pittsburgh so they check and the audible by Fuller of course Steve's got to be a thinker he's uh, major in industrial uh, management over at Clemson six semesters he's had only two B's all the rest of them have been A's three nine five great point average He's only thrown four interceptions out of 182 attempts. That's probably second, first or second in the nation in avoiding interceptions. So obviously Clemson will take the five-yard walk-off against the uh, Pitt Panthers. That'll put the football just inside the Pittsburgh 13, where it's going to be second down and four. They go to the nine for the first down. And you can see that Steve Fuller has just put himself in the Clemson football record book. Second down and four. Fuller down the line, penalty flags. That one, first one came from the referee. And that usually means an infraction by the offense. That will hurt them. They went perfect position to make a first down on about the five yard line and have four downs from the five. But this is going to put them right back on the 19. The illegal motion, somebody moving. Or some kind of procedure. Clemson's running attack here many times, Keith, is check with me at the line. The quarterback will just step in the huddle and say, check with me at the line, and then he will run the option play to the right or the left after he studies the Pittsburgh defense and decides which way. You can see the fullback on the option play start just ahead of the count. Too eager to get in. So the ball is brought back to the 18-yard line of Pittsburgh, where it is second down now, and... since we've had all setting penalty. Fuller back. Throws it short on a screen. It's intercepted. It is intercepted by number 35, Dave DeCicio, a junior out of Midland, Pennsylvania. And I remember vividly how well he played in the opening half against Notre Dame in the opening game of the season. Then he had 16 tackles against Penn State in the last game of the season. He's their end that drops off on passing downs, doesn't rush the pass, so they let Green, the other end, do the rushing. He's in perfect position, but the, again, the ball is tipped through the receiver's hands. Lester Brown, the intended receiver, so Clemson is turned away by the interception. Pittsburgh gets the ball, first down at their 18-yard line, with 16 seconds to play in the first quarter, the long quarter. Walker goes in motion. They give it away inside to Jacobs, and Jacobs runs it out across the 20 to the 23, where Mark Kenneford, a senior out of Loris, South Carolina, makes the tackle, and that should mean the end of the first quarter of play as the clock runs out. And so after the first 15 minutes of football in this 33rd Gator Bowl game here in Jacksonville, Florida, our score, hit 10, and Clemson, nothing. All right, here we go with the second quarter of play in the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville here on ABC. And we do, in fact, wish you all a very happy new year and join us on Monday for the matchup between Ohio State and Alabama. Woody Hayes and Bert Pine. Oh, my goodness. It is second down and five for the Pitt Panthers in white. They lead 10-0. Kavanaugh hands the ball to Elliott Walker. Having a big night, Walker gets a first down as he pounds out near the 34 before Mark Henneford put the stop on him, number 98. Henneford is the lighter of the...
defensive unit up front for Clemson at 199 pounds. The numbers on the first half, right? Well, the, of course, Pittsburgh has the advantage, 145 yards to 90. Most of Clemson's 90 yards was on one play that was wasted with a pass interception on the next series. Again, remind you that Pittsburgh's been hit with six penalties for 50 yards. Clemson, two penalties and 10 yards. And Kavanaugh stands up, pops it, pass caught by Rudershan. Randy keeps pumping away. And he's out to about the 44, and he is very close to a first down. Pittsburgh has not used the same formation on two downs in the ball game. You can see the huddle going on with the offensive unit for the Clemson Tigers on the sidelines, trying to hitch it up and get it all put back together for them. Boys becomes a very important factor. These are two very young football teams. Pittsburgh with 16 seniors on the roster. They had 46 a year ago in the Sugar Bowl when they played Georgia. There are 22 freshmen on an 80-man roster. They're a very young team. But that guy quarterback is an old-timer. Kavanaugh sends it deep for Gordon Jones, and he's got it at the Clemson 15-yard line. A sensational catch. He just simply went up over the top of Rex Barn and brought it down. Barn is 6-1. Gordon Jones, 6 but Jones just outleaped him. Jones is just running the fly pattern. The fake was away from him to keep the free safety out of it. And you can just see he's got too much ability. He goes above him and comes down with the football. Sensational play. A 41-yard pickup on the pass play from Matt Cavanaugh to Gordon Jones. And it's first down Pittsburgh at the Clemson 15. Rex did just about all he could do, didn't he? Yes, he was in perfect position. He just couldn't jump that high. Keeping. Turns it up and his feet slip out from under him and Bubba Rawlins nails him down. Gain two yards. Kavanaugh now seven out of nine for 168 yards. He's one of the best quarterbacks I think I've seen in college football. His game against Georgia in the Sugar Bowl last year I thought was one of the prettiest played by a quarterback that I had ever seen. Does not waste any motion when he delivers the pass either. Gets it out of there in a hurry. Elliot Walker in motion. Kavanaugh turns around and gives to Jacobs, and he goes to the 10. Jacobs is a 175-pounder, and he hits inside with some authority. I mentioned again that the man in motion seems to be confusing. Clemson and Pittsburgh had not used the man in motion earlier in earlier games. This time, with the man in motion, Clemson has to change their defense, and they're leaving some holes in that line of scrimmage. Pittsburgh has been down here in Jacksonville since December 21, cold up at home, so they came on down here to get in some heavy work, and they put the first offense against the first defense and went at it. Third down from just outside the 10, Kavanaugh's pass, good to Walker. Walker tumbles in, touchdown. Is he having a night? Oh. Elliot Walker, right in the corner, went up over the top of Steve Ryan and got it in. They had his second touchdown of the night. Just, uh, they put four receivers out, and they were playing man for man close to the goal line. He was playing him deep, and he let him catch the ball, then run over him. The point try now by Mark Schubert. Tom um, Music will hold it. At 12.04 to go in the second quarter. The kick is good. And so the Pitt Panthers now getting to march along as they build their lead to 17 to nothing. Also, you'll be watching the International Invitational Sidecar Racing from Laguna Seca. Somebody go 100 miles an hour in a sidecar. It's got to be some kind of daredevil I'm not acquainted with. Ooh. Oh. A good year blimp drifting over Jacksonville, Florida. Just driving around the Laguna Seca Raceway in, a, in an automobile is, is enough to go around that thing 100 miles an hour in a sidecar. Oh. Elliot Walker has caught three balls tonight for 83 yards. He has scored two touchdowns, 12.04 to go in the first half, and Pittsburgh is out on top, 17-0, and the Clemson Tigers got some heat on them right now. The kick is fielded 
well upfield at short by number 14, J.D. Hagelin, and he brings it back out across the 25 to about the 27. So Steve Fuller will have a little bit of room to work with now. The wind to his back. And there is enough wind to be concerned about, particularly if you want to throw the ball deep. Pittsburgh will gamble on defense now. They'll go after him with a lot of stunts. Butler comes way wide to the open side of the field. Fuller goes back to throw it. Eats on, gets his pass off. It is complete to Anthony King, the tight end, and King's upfield for a first down for the Clemson Tigers. And they'll mark his progress out to about the 43-yard line. It was beautiful the way Fuller rolled to his left and turned his shoulders, Keith, and went forward towards the line of scrimmage where he could throw the ball accurately to King in the flat who was wide open. Give him 15 yards on the throw and run and up to the 42. First down for the Tigers. Working out of the eye. The man in motion, Fuller back to throw it, goes over the middle, passes too long. Pass was intended for Dwight Clark, 6'3", 207-pound junior out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Fuller had him out there and had a chance to get to him, but the ball was overthrown. He had just one step on the safety man jury. Fuller will not give up. They've been behind before. The drive that they made against South Carolina after leading and going behind was playing a beauty. He and Butler and Weddington looked up from some key pass plays in that one. Second down 10 from the 42, handed off inside to the up man out of the I formation, the fullback, Ken Calicut, and a big senior out of Chester, South Carolina, hits it up near the 47 for five. It'll be third down and five now for the Tigers. David Logan, the middle guard, made the tackle. His third coach to say he's very, very quick nose guard, destroyed their own offense in the spring before he was injured. He's been knocking them around in practice sessions down here in Jacksonville, too. Third and five now for Clemson. And they send Clark in motion again with Fuller looking for some help over the middle. He goes to Butler. Great catch by Butler. Caught the ball right in front of Bob Jury. He took his punishment and held on. First down, Tigers, Pittsburgh, 36. Sensational play. Butler sprints right into the middle, and the rush is on. But Fuller throws it a little bit behind him. Just a great catch. Well, I like him, Frank. He's a good one. Butler and uh, Gordon Jones of Pittsburgh may be two of the finest receivers in America. He looked that thing right into the numbers. He took his punishment and held on for a 17-yard gain. We've got 10 minutes and 57 seconds to play in the first half. Pittsburgh leading 17-0, and Clemson now showing a little bit of hunger for the end zone. Sunday, Al Pacino, star of The Godfather, in his greatest role, Serpico. Here in the Gator Bowl with 10.57 to go in the first half. Pittsburgh leading 17-0. Clemson beginning to move the football for a second time in this ball game. And this program being brought to you as a special exclusive of ABC Sports. Let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. Holiday greetings from Channel 4, WTAE-TV, Pittsburgh. First down, Clemson, Pittsburgh, 36-yard line. Weddington coming in motion. Fuller rolls it the other way, and he just missed Butler. Butler put a heck of a move over there on J.C. Wilson, worked himself right into the crease, and Fuller good hit him. One of the toughest passes to throw. The timing has to be absolutely perfect over behind Wilson, the cornerback in front of Jury, the safety. Fuller is now 5 out of 10 in passing with 107 yards, one interception. Kavanaugh, 8 out of 10 for 178 yards and two touchdowns. Most bowl games are decided on the passing game. Second and 10 at the 36. This time Clark comes in motion and Fuller hands inside to his fullback Calicut. No room there as Logan and company nail the play down at the 34-yard line. Jeff Pelusi, sophomore linebacker out of Youngstown, Ohio. Clemson moves with their man in motion to make Pittsburgh uh, defense pin them down a little bit to where they can't use those multiple schemes. Ken Calicut had to come out of the ball game. Tracy Perry going in at fullback. Absolutely undressed Calicut that last carry. He's got to get a new shirt wearing those tearaway jerseys. It's third down and eight yards to go, and Fuller has it. 
Got some room to run. We cannot get enough as he is knocked out of bounds by Dave DeCicio short of the 30-yard line. So it's going to bring up fourth and long for Clemson. Fuller has deceptive speed, 4'6", but he's so tall, about 6'4 or 5", that he doesn't look very fast, but he can run with the football. Billy Lott comes out. That means that we'll have uh, Obed Ariri from Nigeria, a sophomore, trying a field goal, and it'll be a 49-yarder. Got enough leg. Clemson's on the board. get some points out of that. That will really change the momentum and give them some hope. Going to have to do it past, it looks like. 17-3 ball game now with 10.05 to play in the first half. Big plays have been uh, uh, the difference in this ball game. But Pittsburgh with uh, Eddie Walker, they just can't cover it. Also with Gordon Jones. Jones right now is going deep to receive the kickoff from Ariri of the Clemson Tigers, number 24 in white. And he is a flyer. His nickname is Too Much Talent. Instead of Too Much, Too, too Tall Jones, is Too Much Talent. <laughs> Ariri ready now. to it sideways and whack it and hangs it way up in the air pretty short take it up on oh it's fumbled up on the 12 yard line by Mike Balzer and Mike gets it out across the 15 to about the 17. See the Tiger Paws painted on the cheeks of the ladies all over the stadium. Like I said a while ago that's sort of become the, the symbol of Clemson football. Their fans are enthusiastic and they get involved. The strategy on that kickoff, Keith, was to keep it away from Gordon Joe. They kicked it over to the corner where he could not get it. Worked for him, too, because Pittsburgh now got a start with the ball just outside the 16, as you see the comparison between the two teams so far in passing and rushing. Exactly 10 minutes to play in the first half. Rudershan's in motion. Kavanaugh keeping, now giving it. And the football is fumbled, and Clemson got it. Hello. Hello. That's the break they needed. Jim Stuckey, number 83, a 235-pound sophomore out of Case, South Carolina, comes up with the recovery. And Kavanaugh was going to his left with his and pitching the ball back with his left wrist. The sore left sit. wrist that is still in Case in a wrapping. He has been very reluctant to run the option play to the left, but it was right on par. Oh, yeah. It wasn't that small. No. Jacobs just uh, took his eyes off of it. One thing you have to do is concentrate. You can't look where you go run until you catch it. So Fred Jacobs' fumble gives Clemson the ball. First down at the 18-yard line with 9.54 to go, and everybody wearing orange is up and hollering. Weddington in motion for Clemson. Steve Fuller. Rose got Buck Lawrence intercepted. Bob Jury stepped in front and picked it off, and he comes back out to the 27-yard line. Fuller had Butler and waited just a fraction too long. He was open, the ball, he wasn't ready to throw, roll into his left, Keith, it takes a little bit longer to turn your shoulders, shift your feet, and be able to release the ball, go into the left, and by then, Jury had recovered. You can see Fuller roll into his left, turn it up in where he can't get it, but by the time he throws it, here is Jury, who, that's his 20th interception as a Pittsburgh Panther player. Ten last the, year. Only the fifth time this season that uh, Fuller has been intercepted. So the Panthers get it right back. First down at the 27. Rudishan open side of the field. Motion. Short pass. Incomplete intended for Gordon Jones. And Kavanaugh threw that one a little bit behind Gordon. And a little bit hard. And a little hard, yeah. That's a tough pass to cover. It's a tough pass to throw. And it's tough to catch. The quick slant in. 
So it'll be second down and 10 for the Panthers now. As they are working from their 27-yard line on Bob Jury's 20th career interception at Pittsburgh. Jones in motion. Gavin on a throw. Loops up the screen. Walker's got it. And number 84, Jonathan Brooks, makes a fine play defensively for Clemson. He trailed it all the way across the field, coming from his left-end position. And he made the stop. He recognized it, and he didn't let anything delay him. He very eagerly sprinted across the field. By the time Walker got it, he was on top of it. Sensational play, defensive play for Brooks. And so it is. Third down at 10 now from the 27. It's very coach said they were going to throw the ball 25 or more times tonight, and they're doing it. Yep. That's called a fun game. <laughs> Bostad in motion. Kavanaugh under pressure, who gets away from it. Everybody's covered now. Matt's got to eat it back at the 20. Great coverage by Clemson. When you scramble that long, you just hold your breath because somebody's going to be open. But Clemson had him covered. The two tackles, Stokey number 83 and Archie Reese number 65, were the two people who really had the heat on Kavanaugh. And now Gasparovic is in the punt into the win and the ball should be hit with a foot right about the 10-yard line. Willie Jordan is back to receive it, so Clemson should come out of this with pretty decent field position. They've got 10 men up, and Pittsburgh's taking plenty of time to count them all, but now they're dropping back. Now they feel three back to block. The kick is away, and it's a cannon shot. Beautiful kick by Gasparovic, fielded by Jordan. To the sideline and out of bounds. It was a 47-yard punt by the Pittsburgh freshman Leroy Felder shoved the receiver out of bounds clock stops at 8.01 to play first half and Pitt leading 17 to three. three wins between them first down for Clemson at the 44 yard line Fuller rides it off inside and the first big break up the middle by a running back is Tracy Perry the fullback of the sophomore from Roxboro gets a first down for the Clemson Tigers inside the Pittsburgh 45 Keith, the outside there was originally designed for the split backs, but the, the eye formation teams have picked it up. You'll see the tight end blocked down. It's the outside there. He's trying to get in for the linebacker, but he can't do it, but he leaves it with the fullback. Breaks clean inside the defensive end. Ball is handed off again inside. Fuller turned around anxiously after the handoff, not at all sure that he'd been able to get the football over to his uh, fullback, uh, Perry. Jeff Belusi and Bill Neal were right there for Pittsburgh. There was very little gain on the play, maybe a half yard. So it'll be a second down now. Yeah, he's going to be looking at third down and about six. Logan on the tackle. Oh, big chief. Back. Ball is just short of the 40. Where it'll be third down and six. Yeah, he's going to take time out. He's not sure what to do. So the time is called by Clemson as Fuller comes to the sideline to talk to the offensive coordinator and his head coach, Charlie Bell. Time out remaining. Clemson one more. And Pittsburgh with all three remaining at 6.32 to go in the first half of the ball game. And the Panthers leading by a score of 17 to 3. Twice Clemson has been in position to threaten the end zone, and twice have been turned away by interception. One by Bob Jury and the other by Dave DeCicio. To give you an idea of the appetite for this ball game by the Clemson followers, they had a basketball game that was transferred from Clemson down here to Jacksonville and played at the Jacksonville Coliseum today. And uh, it was uh, Clemson's team coming into the game was 8-1. They were playing Boston University. They didn't sell any tickets at all for the ball game played here in Jacksonville. All of the tickets were sold up in South Carolina. And Clemson rewarded those faithful folks with a 155 victory, and the Tiger basketball team is now 9-1. They've got a good program going. That'd be congratulated. Good football team, good basketball. The money sports. Big play here, third down six, if they are to keep possession. Fuller back to throw. Passes away to the sidelines to the tight end, King. And King is melted down at about the 34, and he may have just enough. 
Looks like he made it, Keith, on a sensational play. If he'd gone on out of bounds, it would not have been a first down, but he stopped, cut back inside very wisely, and made the first down on individual effort. Just inside the Pittsburgh 34. It was an option pass. He didn't know whether to go to the curl man or the flat. The flat man's open, but watch him stop. The defender overruns it. Number 14, he cuts back and just makes the first down. Clock running at six minutes to play first half. Pitt leading 17-3. Mark in motion. Fuller, under pressure. Hugh Green, 99, gets the quarterback down at the 33. So he gained about six inches on the carry. Hugh Green is a freshman out of Natchez, Mississippi at 6'2", 215, and with his quickness, and undoubtedly still growing. I wouldn't be surprised to see him show up at linebacker. And he made second team all American as a freshman. <laughs> Their coaches just smile when they mention his name. <laughs> well, it's second down and 10. Just outside the 33 or inside the 34. Fuller. Green's after him and got him. Pressure was on to that side. Fuller actually fell over his own quarterback, Tracy Perry, trying to block Dave Logan, but it was Fuller who got very much involved and brought him down. And you're right, I haven't called Randy Holloway's number yet tonight because uh, he's been pretty well contained over there by the likes of Jimmy Weeks, Lacey Brumley, and Joe Bostick. His strong point is rushing the pass of Randy Holloway. Up in the center of that Clemson offensive line, you have Jeff Bostick at center and Joe Bostick at guard. Two brothers playing shoulder to shoulder. On third down, pass is incomplete. Well, he gets up all right. Lester Brown, I wasn't sure if Lester was going to get up after that lick by Al Chesley, number 55. <laughs> The linebacker's got all the advantage on that play. The ball carrier's looking back a little. It's a delay where a Brown fakes a block over on the right of the screen and then drifts right over the middle, and he's looking at the ball. Of course, the linebacker has a free shot at it. 54-yard field goal try by Obed Ariri. He hit a 49er a moment ago, but this one's going to be short. And slides on to the right. So he misses from 54 yards. Clemson gives up the football. It'll be first down for the Panthers at their 20. They lead it 17 to 3. All right, the Panthers have the ball. First down at the 20 as a result of the missed field goal from 54 yards by Ariri of Clemson. Matt Cavanaugh is in there at quarterback. He's gone all the way so far. Rudershan in motion. Panthers working into the wind. Cavanaugh options. Slips and slides down. Right up across the 20 at the 21 yard line. At halftime, our Fireman's Fun flashback tonight will feature some of the history on Clemson football and the man who made it so. The man who coached football up in Death Valley, as they call it, in South Carolina, for 30 years. Only head coaching job he ever had, Frank Hopkins. And he was assistant nine before that, 39 years. Bobby Dodd's the only other one I know has spent that much time at the same school. school. Second down nine for the Panthers from the 21. Oh, it's Elliot Walker, and he pops it over the left side and gets it up to the 27, and one more step, and he would have been long gone. Matt Carroll is playing over on the left side, replacing Art Fortnick in tonight's game. As you see, the pretty Gator Queen, Susie O'Donoghue. Very cold. We were down in Orlando a couple of days ago, and it was woof. Oh, cold up here. Cold in Miami. But it's uh, warmed up considerably. Third down and three. Kavanaugh keeps. Fights into the stack at 219 pounds. He's got enough muscle to get in there and knock heads with him, and he's out across the 30, and he's going to have a Pittsburgh first down. Elliot Walker, he is one yard shy of 1,000 for the 1977 football season. One yard. Kavanaugh made the first down just on his straight. He was hit a yard in the backfield. He just kept pushing forward and made two yards and got the first down. At 254 to play in the first half, it's a 17 to 3 ball game. Clemson's had their opportunities. But so far, the Pittsburgh defense turned them away. Two interceptions primarily the reason. First down, 31. 
Bostad in motion. Kavanaugh options outside. It comes to Elliott Walker. He's got his thousand yards. He got two yards on that carry. And so Elliott Walker, the number two man in rushing history at Pittsburgh behind Tony Dorsett. And have a look now at Randy Scott, leading tackler for Clemson this season. He, he's protected and he scrapes off right outside and finally gets back in the play. They try to protect him where no offensive blocker can get to him and then he can pursue and make the play without blockers at his legs. The football is sitting at the 33, second down and eight for Pittsburgh and time is called now. Charge to Pittsburgh. So the Panthers will have two times out remaining with 159 to play in the first half. Clemson now making some defensive substitutions too. We've had a considerable amount of rotation among the defensive backs with Eddie Getters, Brian Keir, Bubba Rollins, and uh, Willie Jordan playing in the secondary. And now you get Roy Epps back in, Steve Ryan, and Rex Barn. That's amazing, Keith, that they will play eight defensive backs. Most coaches are reluctant to play even the fifth defensive back. They usually keep four people out there even when they're way ahead. They're just scared to put anybody else in. But he told me to stay. They rotate eight defensive backs. Ogden Hensford is what they call the rover at uh, Clemson. He's number 18. The wolf at Michigan. Yeah. The hog at Arkansas. You don't call him a hog. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Razorbacks. Oh, this night is over. I want to hear a little suey pig. <laughs> I said today in the hotel, if these Tiger fans could learn to yell like woo pig suey, they'd tear the roof off these pigs. <laughs> <laughs> they'd made a lot of noise oh, when they it wouldn't be fair. Here, right? It wouldn't be fair. <laughs> 159 to go in the first half. Pittsburgh with the ball. Second down. Eight yards to go. Willie Taylor in motion. to Jones. He's short. He has it. He slides down. First down Pittsburgh at the Clemson 47. Absolutely perfect execution, Keith. One-on-one -on -one coverage. Faked away from him. Jones pushes deep. You can see the quarterback fake to the left. Kevin is going to throw back to the right. One-on-one -on -one throw back hook. No man in America can cover it. You have to double cover it if you're going to stop it. If I were a defensive back and saw Gordon Jones coming at me like that, I think all I could say was, oh, Lord, he helped me. Here's the pass to the sidelines. It bounces in front of Willie Taylor. It is incomplete. So it'll be second down and 10. Here's the strong man in the middle who bench presses uh, 500 pounds. And you can see he and Brazoza are having a war. And uh, Brazoza's getting a little help from the guard. But that's what a nose man's faced with because the guards can turn in on him. He's got the whip three to rush the pass. Gave old Tom a lick there, didn't he? Yes, he did. Ball is at the 47, second down and 10. 47 of clips. into the linebacker Scott's hands, but it was so hard he couldn't handle it. And Jones come back, makes a sensational play. He's alert. And it's a first down. At the Clemson 35, Kavanaugh goes the other way to Jones, and he dropped it. He's tired. <laughs> Look at him. Yeah, Rex he Barnes. is tired. Rex Enright Barnes. Does that stir some memories? Well, Rex Enright, who coached so long and so well at the University of South Carolina, has been dead. Jones now has caught the ball five times for 100 yards in the game. He's out now, and Rudershan is in to replace him at the wide receiver position. Rudershan has been playing at the flanker spot, but Taylor stays in, and Rudershan will go wide. Most teams that play a zone coverage, double cover, on these passing downs, but Clemson has yet to double cover. On second and 10, just inside the Clemson 35. Penalty flag thrown, too much time called against the Panthers. That'll back them up. It'll be second down and 15. They had the blitz on then. They were going to play man and rush. And the linebackers are snorting back there. One of the <laughs> cornerbacks probably said, no, nah, I'm going to miss my chance to sock it to him. A minute and 14 seconds to go in the first half. 
Pittsburgh, again, I'll go back to that number I gave you earlier on the total number of penalties this past season. 87 times they were whistled down for 824 yards. That's a bunch. You have to have a great quarterback to make it up and get any points on the scoreboard. Second down, 15 for the 40. Kavanaugh, good protection over the middle. And where's his man? Nobody there. Taylor coming back into the middle. It looked like Rudershan and Taylor, one of them ran the wrong pattern. I think he just threw the ball away. The receivers were both covered. They were in the man-for-man -man blitz. He knew he had to get rid of it, and the receiver had not been able to get open on the post route, so he just threw it down there anyway. Well, I'm sure Matt appreciates you saying that. <laughs> <laughs> or if, in fact, there was a mistake made. He, he doesn't panic. He, he, he hasn't been off target that far. I think he did it purposely. It's third down at 15. Those formations are confusing a little bit. Now you send Rudersen. Now they're going to pay the price for all that fiddling around. It's going to cost them another five yards for too much time. What they did was they sent Jacobs out of the ball game, brought in Rudersen to put him in motion out of a backfield position, and that would give them the three wide men, Taylor, Jones, and uh, Rudersen. And Randy's a sort of a fellow who will play anywhere, including tote the water bucket. But that time he said, wait a minute, hey, this is something new. <laughs> the strategy. Did we practice this? The strategy was to get uh, Rudishan on a linebacker man for man. They expected rush again, and that would force the linebacker to drop off and cover him, and he's a wide receiver, and it would be a mismatch. 110 to go first half. Eight minutes, 62 yards now against the Panthers in the first half. They lead 17 to 3. And you got the same situation now as Rudishan goes in motion. That gives him three wide men. And Kavanaugh's pass scored over the middle. It is no good. Double coverage that time. First time tonight, Frank. We've had double, and they doubled up on Gordon Jones. He is the type of receiver that you will have to double up a lot. And then when you do, you weaken your, your running defense to the other side, which is their formation side. He's the split end. Kevin all threw that football about 44 yards into the wind. Decent arm. Jordan is back now. Willie going back to near his 15, inside the 15 now, as Gasparovic is in to do the punting. And Joe should hit it from around his own 45-yard line. Minute and three seconds to go in the first half. <laughs> Pittsburgh taking a whole lot of time. He got the blitz the whole time. Well, there's not much pressure on him. It's a low spinner, and it takes a good bounce. Jordan's going to leave it alone because he's looking at white shirts. Pelusi in a hurry down there to eyeball at him. And uh, the ball is marked down just inside the 12. Walt Brown, who does the snapping for Pittsburgh, was also downfield. They tell me that Walt Brown has not had a bad snap all year. It was a 38-yard punt. Uh, on the surface, that might not look like so much, but look where the ball is. No return back at the 12, at the 7. The long snap is a lost art. The deep formation, you know, and did away the single wing. You just don't develop the long snappers, and coaches are looking for them. Get them out of the student body like we did this year. Yes. <laughs> at the 7, Clemson's ball, first down. Butler comes wide with the open side on the left side. They'll play with it in the middle as they bring it up across the 10 for about three, maybe four, as we go inside a minute to play in the first half. So the Pitt Panthers figure to go to the locker room, leading by 14 at halftime, expecting a considerable joust with these Tigers in the second half because Clemson, as I said, had their opportunities to put more points on the board but were turned away on two occasions by interceptions, DeCicio and Jury. Looking down on the gate of old from Goodyear Glimp. Captain Larry Chambers. Second down and seven, and popping out of the stack. And getting good yardage out of it is Ken Calicut, the fullback. He's up for a first down. And we've got 13 seconds to play in the first half. Looking at the Pittsburgh side of the field with the head coach Jackie Sherrill there in the background. Two seconds, one second, and the first half is over. And the score at halftime, Pittsburgh 17, Clemson 3. We'll be back with a Fireman's Fund flashback and other halftime activities after this message and the word from our local station.
theme from Star Wars, concluding the halftime performance of the University of Pittsburgh marching band. Their beautiful ladies and their splendid attire in blue. They exit the field, and coming up shortly will be the Clemson band. Right now, the problem for the Clemson Tigers is to get 14 points, get back in the ball game, and try to contain this very versatile offensive Pittsburgh attack because they've done a little bit of everything so far in tonight's ball game and Clemson will be kicking off to Pittsburgh they are taking the win here and they will have the win in the third quarter the deep man for the Pitt Panthers will be Gordon Jones he'll be standing back around his uh, five-yard line Jojo Heath number 36 is also back there as a Reary hits a liner that goes into the end zone and it'll be first down Pittsburgh out at the 20. Now, the Pitt Panthers figure to open up with the same offensive unit that played the first half, and the halftime numbers show these kind of totals. Pittsburgh, of course, has the advantage on the scoreboard. They have the advantage in the statistics, but mainly because they cashed in on the scoring opportunities, and Clemson did not. That's the difference. So the Panthers come up now with Matt Cavanaugh as quarterback, Elliot Walker, Brett Jacobs, they send Gostad in motion, and Kavanaugh options the ball to Elliott Walker. Walker is caught and down at the 26-yard line. Now, the defensive unit for the Clemson Tigers has Jonathan Brooks at left end. Jim Stuckey at left tackle recovered a fumble. The strong man in the middle is Rich Tootin. Archie Reese is a big right-side tackle, and Mark Henneford. They ride in with Randy Scott, the linebacker, along with Bubba Brown, left and right. We'll show you the defensive secondary in just a moment. We've got a man down on the field. One of the Clemson players is shaken up, and we have a record crowd for the Gator Bowl game tonight. New attendance record of 72,289. The old mark, 72,248, was set in 1969 when Florida beat Tennessee 14 to 13. It was Jim Stuckey shaken up. He's coming out. Roy Epps, a cornerback. Rex Barn is the other cornerback for the Tigers. Ogden Hansford is the Tiger back for the Rover. And Steve Ryan is the free safety. So Stuckey is out of the lineup, and Tony Williams goes in. He's a junior from Darlington, South Carolina. Number 76. Steve, the reason the coaches take them out is not a charge timeout to them if they substitute the in, for the engine player for one play. Football is at the 22-yard line of Pittsburgh. Second down and eight to go for the Panthers. And Elliot Walker has gone over the 1,000-yard mark in tonight's game. And Kavanaugh throws that little pop. It is knocked up in the air, and it is caught by Randy Rodershan. And that is the second Pittsburgh pass completion we have had tonight that has bounced off of a Clemson player. It banged this time off Jonathan Brooks. Last time it was Randy Scott and Gordon Jones made the catch. So you've got to be in the ball game to make that kind of play work, right? It's a slant in pass, and of course the lineman deflects the ball, and it goes a mile high. Taylor just comes across and grabs it very, very alertly. And it's a first down for the Pitt Panthers out of the 41-yard line. 19 yards on the pickup. Elliot Walker caught behind the line of scrimmage. Back in the lineup, Jim Stuckey out for one play, came right back in and made the play right at the line of scrimmage. The Pittsburgh uh, backfield uh, and the wide men line up with Kavanaugh, Porter, Jacobs, Walker, the setbacks, Rudershan, Jones, lost at the tight end. Walker now 10 for 31 in tonight's game, running the ball, gives him 1,003 yards. Offensive unit there up front, you see, for the Panthers on second down and 10. Oh, Walker, big hole up the middle, and he gets over to the Clemson 48, maybe the 47th, and will mark Hennifer, number 98, makes the tackle for the Tigers. And so Elliot Walker, who's playing on a sore right ankle, Having trouble getting up on that ankle right now. We may see a change at the running back position. He's been hobbled with that sore right ankle. And he's going to leave the ball game. And coming in to replace him is Jojo Heath, number 36, a sophomore out of Manesson, Pennsylvania. You can see that Walker's had a big night. Bulk of that yardage, however, 125 of it, has come at the end of passes. Four for 83. Kavanaugh back to throw. A lot of time and hits the man on the sideline. Gordon Jones, first down. It's 
Pittsburgh at the Clemson 31. Jones just went down the sidelines and hit the ground. And the defensive cornerback will retreat. He thinks he reads him going deep. If you had a picture of it, he would be faking deep, and the cornerback is way down the left corner of the fifth, number 25. He had fallen down. You can see the, the great speed that uh, Jones has. When he pushes deep, you can see number 25 think that he's already committed deep, but he turns and the ball is right on target. Tough to defend. Jones is a junior. He'll be back next year. First down at the Clemson 31. Uh-oh, he's going to throw it. He throws for Jones, and it is intercepted by Steve Ryan. Took it right off the grass. Was right there looking in on it and immediately called an interception. The old coaches would say, Was Kavanaugh throw it while anybody else throw? But that's what you'd say after it's intercepted. Of course, of course uh, you can see that the quarterback turned right back. The pass was underthrown. Jones could have been open for the touchdown. It's first down. Clemson at their own five. Now he delivers it outside, and there's about a yard there for the trailing back, Lester Brown, and Jeff Delaney, the strong safety across to make the tackle. Hugh Green was also involved in the play. So give him a yard, second down at nine, coming up. Jeff Delaney is a 3.8 free man student, kind of strong safety. He's got a lot of complicated assignments that you won't. He can do anything you ask of. He's big enough, 6'1", 190, out of Upper St. Clair, Pennsylvania. Fuller hands it off inside to Calicut, and Calicut gets it uh, up across the 10 to the 12. Here's a look at the Pittsburgh defenders. Dave DeCicio, who had a pass interception in the first half at end. Gary Silvestri is the left tackle. Jerry Boyarski started at middle guard. Randy Holloway, the All-American defensive tackle. And number 99, Hugh Green, has been very active. Jeff Pelusi, the left linebacker. And Al Chesley, the right linebacker. The football is at the 12-yard line. It is third down and three yards to go for Clemson if they are to keep it. Spins, and he's across the 15. He will have his first down. Al Chesley made the tackle for Pittsburgh. So the Tigers wriggle off the hook a little bit here as they move it from the 5 out to the 16. The defensive secondary for Pittsburgh, J.C. Wilson is the cornerback. On the left side, Leroy Felder, the cornerback on the right side. Jeff Delaney, the young man we were talking about a moment ago. And Bob Jury, who had a pass interception, is 20th in his career in Pittsburgh at the free safety. First down, Tigers at the 16. Chesley made a move like he was coming. Fuller takes it the other way with Mr. Brown. And Brown found a little room on the sideline that time. Got it up across the 20 before Jeff Belusi knocked him out of bounds and Charlie Fell facing the sideline. His ball club down to 14 points here in the third quarter. The scout report on Fuller is he's a daring, loud pitch man on the option play. He'll pitch ball it, he'll pitch downfield. He takes a lot of risk with it and has been successful all year long. They haven't laid the ball on the ground too many times. Second down, four. From out near the 23. Take it inside. That play should be very close to a first down as the game goes up beyond the 25 to the 26. Harold Goggin, number 32, is in the lineup. At tailback now for Clemson, and it may be close enough to measure for them. Here's the Bostic brothers, the center and right guard. And you watch their block, and the key to a good blocker is moving his feet and following through. Number 71, the All-American, makes the block and keeps his feet going for a nice game. The follow-through is what counts. That was Calicut, number 22, carrying the ball out just beyond the 26, and it is a first down. Calicut has carried it seven times for 32 yards. So the Tigers now are getting a little muscle built up here. If they get up ahead of steam, get on the board, we'd have a tussle, wouldn't we? Fuller rolling around with it. Gets his pass off down the sideline. Just come, oh, incomplete, and that's a great play. 
Just an outstanding play by Delaney. I thought Weddington had the ball in his hand. Number 12. And then suddenly number 14 and White reached in and flicked it away. I don't see how he did that. The <laughs> pass was completed. Uh, as you can see right oh, here, he and then he comes right back and just strips the ball free. That's a sensational play and a very unusual play and a very almost, alert play. Almost possession, too. Yeah, the official of waited before he called. He wasn't sure which, he's which way he's going to call it. Well, it is an incomplete forward pass. It is second down and ten. Mark in motion. Fuller gives, keeps it. Got a man he's deep. Open. Under throws him, and he had Clark wide open. He had six points in his pocket and couldn't hit him. Fuller was trying to get away from Gary Silvestri, the big senior from Oyster Bay, New York. Defensive tackle was pursuing him. And he had his man, Clark, wide open. Fuller did a great job uh, eluding the rush. Uh, Sylvester was not blocked. They blitzed the linebacker. The tackle turned to block the linebacker. No one was to block the tackle, Sylvester, coming from the outside. The offensive front. Clemson reflected there on third down and ten. Fuller's pass deep. Got him. Butler, no! Ball was thrown behind Jerry. He had to turn. He was going to his right, had to turn back to his left, and just was not calling. He's broken hearted. He had defensive safety beat by a good three or four yards. Well, on successive plays, though, Frank, the Clemson receivers were open. You, you can see how far behind the secondary he is for the touchdown. The wind sailed the ball a little bit. On the punt by Tony Masson. It's fielded by Gordon Jones, and Jones returns it on a 35-yard punt from his 38 back out to the 42. And we have 10.04 to go third quarter, with Pitt continuing to lead by a score of 17 to 3. Incredible action in the International Invitational Sidecar Motorcycle Race tomorrow on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Also tomorrow, world figure skating champions from Tokyo, Japan, and the World Trophy Freestyle Skiing Championships. Over most of these ABC stations. Five Eastern and Pacific, and four Central Time. The football is at the Pittsburgh 42-yard line now. As the Panthers come up with a 14-point lead, 17-3. Good field position. Heath is in the backfield. Walker has not returned after hurting the ankle. Kavanaugh keeping. Matt breaks it across midfield, goes to the Clemson 48. He's close to a first down. Gordon Jones tonight has set a new Pittsburgh season record of 41 pass receptions for 744 yards. The old record 732 held by a fellow named Bob Longo. Remember him? Set it back in 1966. Jones has caught six tonight for 115 yards. Mike Swanson, our statistician, tells us. Jones in motion. Kavanaugh hands it off inside. And the gain is from the 48 down to near the 45. It was second down and very short yard. It's a half a yard. And obviously they get the first down exactly on the 45 of Clemson. Clemson linebacker Fidel shot the gap and nearly took the ball away from Cavanaugh. He just did get the handoff in time. Matt's gone back into the huddle uh, getting a new shirt, tear away jersey from the sidelines. That's how cool he is. He's walking up there putting on his shirt. Hands the ball off inside on first down from the 45. Play good for three yards as Fred Jacobs carries. And now Matt can get his shirt tail back in place. Get himself civil for his public appearance. That's Cavanaugh's assistance for the ball game. Tremendous first half. 13 out of 20, 246 yards. Fuller, 6 out of 16, 115 yards and two interceptions. Block running in the third quarter. Second down, seven. Kavanaugh chunks it outside. Ball gets away and goes out of bounds. Bounced off Fred Jacobs and rolls into the Clemson bench. Pittsburgh will retain possession. They lost yardage on the play back near the original line of scrimmage, 45. 
believe Pittsburgh's had the reverse of Murphy's Law. <laughs> if something good's going to happen, it's going to happen every time and happen to you right away. <laughs> I don't know whether that's the reverse or not, but that's I wish what I happened. could borrow some of it. <clears throat> the 45, just outside the 45 now. Third down, a little more than 10. Willie Taylor goes in motion. Kavanaugh rolls back to throw. Got some pressure. Got his pass off. It is complete to Gordon Jones down at the 30. And that will be a first down. Jones getting 15 yards on that pass reception. Archie Reese, number 65, was the man coming hard, but Kavanaugh got it away. And watch the quick release of Kavanaugh. Everybody talks about quick releases. Watch this one. This is Ooh. impossible to cover one on one. It's the same pass they have thrown five times in the ball game. One man cannot cover him short and deep. That's the reason he's wide open. Willie Jordan at 5'9", 185 back there, scuffling with Jones is six feet one. A little outsized on the play. It couldn't handle it. Kavanaugh gives this one off inside to uh, Elliot Walker, who has come back into the lineup now. And the senior out of Miami. Hits it from the just outside the 30 down to the 27th. Give him the better part of three yards, a little more than three yards on the carry, and Walker hobbles off the field again. So unless the score gets an awful lot closer, we may not see Elliott anymore tonight because he's really dragging that foot down. It gets sore as the game progresses. Second down, seventh. Kavanaugh. Options up the field, goes down as he crosses the 20 to the 18, and that should be another Pittsburgh first down. And so the Panthers now, working with the option, moving that football. Both of the option plays, Keith, the defensive end has used the technique we call slow play, and he overplayed it outside, and uh, Kevin broke inside for big gains on both Times. All that practice they did on using the wishbone in the goal line area, man, we haven't seen it yet. They did use it one time for a first down play. Let's call it the 19. It's close to there. First down, Pittsburgh. Ball goes to Heath. And JoJo is down close to the 10-yard line. He's about a yard and a half to two yards short of his first down. Got a big block on the right side from uh, Carroll and Link to lead him through there. His walker on the side looks like he may have cramps. No, they're checking his knee. That's too bad. I guess when you have a sore ankle, though, you probably ache all over. At least that side of your body does. It's second down. Call it two yards from the 11. Oh, not much there that time. As Clemson had good penetration, Fred Jacobs carries and Randy Scott hopping through and again an example of the linebacker being hidden away from the offensive people and he penetrated and got it. Keith the fans and the viewers can't see them what what the motion does to the defense seven men moved on that particular play with men in motion but no one was blocked and uh, penetrated stopped him for no game. In fact he lost the yard on the play they're looking at third and three now. Kavanaugh Turns it up, lunges, and that's what a 219-pound strong quarterback can do for you. He can get you a first down and goal to go at the eight-yard line. He jumps right up. He's going to have that wrist operated on as soon as this game is over sometime in early January. To restore the flexibility he had before he went down under Willie Fry in the opening game of the season at Pitt Stadium in Pittsburgh. Kavanaugh's carried now nine times for 28 yards in the game. Got two tight ends, Benji Pryor and Steve Gostad in there now. Oh, bad pitch up. That was a bad pitch as Heath has to come back to the 20-yard line to get it. And the man that caused as much trouble as anybody was Mark Hennifer, number 98. This is the option play, and uh, Kavanaugh is not anticipating the quick charge by Hennifer. Hennifer, and he pitches poorly. They're lucky to get the ball back. At the 20, where it is second down and goal to go. Elliot Walker on the sidelines. Aiken a little bit. Time is called. Kavanaugh strolling to the sidelines to talk with the powers that be. Trying to get another touchdown with his team leading 17 to 3. Rock in the new year with Dick Clark with live portions from Times Square in New York tomorrow. 
We're back live here on ABC at the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville with 4.41 to go in the third quarter of play and Pittsburgh with a football second down and goal to go from the 20. Clemson trying to keep the Panthers out of the end zone. Trying to get something going for themselves. Kavanaugh straight back. He's looking for Jones. Can't find him. Throws instead for Jacobs. And Fred is wrestled out at the 11th. So it'll be third down and goal as Steve Ryan, who had the interception a few minutes ago for Clemson, shoved the pass receiver Jacobs out of bounds. It was about, about his fourth choice. He was looking for the post route. Then he was looking for the tight end on delay. All, both were covered. He finally uh, found Jacobs over on the boundary, had the quick enough arm and strong enough to get it to him across the field. Also tells you, Frank, that the offensive, uh, the big guys up front, yeah. that offensive line, are doing their job in protecting because he did have a lot of time. Third down goal to go from just outside the 10. Over the middle! Touchdown, Gordon Jones! And Charlie Fell looked there for a moment like lightning had just oh. struck him because it looked like Jones is pretty well covered, but he just danced in the middle and uh, Kavanaugh threw the bullet and he held it. Blazer was covered in man for man, had his back to the passer, and he threw it right by him. He didn't get a chance to turn around and find the ball at all. And so Pittsburgh build its lead to 23-3. They'll go for the point now with Schubert in to do the kicking. is high enough, certainly, and it is good. And so at 4.20 to go in the third quarter, it's 24 to 3, and here's the touchdown. Here's the replay. As you can see, he's looking to see where the coverage is, and he shoots the ball right by a ball, so he never saw it. He has back to the receiver. It's going to be fun to watch Rod Gerald try to outquick that, I think, very quick Alabama defensive unit in the Sugar Bowl on Monday at 2 Eastern time. Indicator Bowl is now 24 to 3 as Gordon Jones has set another new Pittsburgh record with nine touchdowns for a season and Kavanaugh 16 out of 23 three touchdowns and 280 yards in tonight's game as Clemson sends Jordan and Underwood deep to return this football that will be kicked by Dave Trout. Clemson needs a big play to pump him up. Trout just hammers it. Jordan from the goal line, really looking for room. And he's across the 25 to the 26 before he goes down. Let's go back to the touchdown play, an isolated look at Gordon Jones. Gordon Jones is running a quick post route. Steve Ryan, their free safety, is covering man for man. He's coming across, he's watching him, he does not see the ball thrown. Touchdown. Oh. Money too, wouldn't it? Yes, seemed in there. First down for the Tigers now at their own 26. That's Weddington in motion. Fuller will put it up. Weddington has it. Goes down at the 37. That'll be a first down for Clemson. Tackle Al Chesley. Linebacker dropped off at the short zone to cover for Pittsburgh. Clemson coaches told me this morning, Keith, that they had not faced during the season a sophisticated passed attack that could throw drop backs, roll outs, play actions. The whole works. They were worried about it. Justifiably so. That's Clark in motion. Fuller will throw again. No, he won't. Hugh Green's got him. Number 76, however, was the first man to come pounding in there and get a piece of him, Bill Neal. That's turned him around, and then Hugh Green came in to finish him off back just inside the 35. Pittsburgh had 41 sacks this year of, quarter, of opposition quarterbacks, and Hugh Green was the leader in that department with 11. I think the main reason is that he has lined up over the tackle most of the time, and he can outquick an offensive tackle. And the, the pass rush is successful if you can make contact with the blocker before he can set and deliver a punch, and he can do it. So time is called by Steve Fuller as he goes to the sidelines, and he wants some counsel over there after being pounded by Mr. Green. 
and try to figure out how in the world as they can get this thing operating a little bit better with 3.29 to go in the third quarter and fit on top by 21, 24 to 3. You can see it's the fake of the dive play to the tailback. Fuller is rushed from the outside. The receivers are covered. Neal forces him back to the left, and there's Mr. Green. Randy Holloway was also coming on the play and just missed getting a piece of the quarterback. So Fuller now has had the conference on the sidelines, and he goes back on the field. See if he's got something out of the playbooks that will maybe get something going here. We have changes in the running back positions as well. With Marvin Sims, a sophomore out of Phoenix City, Alabama, he had at the fullback, and Harold Goggins, uh, number 32, a junior from Clinton, South Carolina, he in at the uh, tailback position. We put Weddington in motion again. Fuller has no chance to play it. Coming across, number 78, David Logan. The middle guard, and so Pittsburgh sacks the Clemson quarterback for the third time in tonight's ball game. And the loss is back to the 32-yard line now, where it is third down and 16. When you're behind, you're sprinting out, throwing to the side that you're rolling to, and you can believe receivers are going to be covered most of the time. Well, you sort of figure here he looks for Jerry Butler, who has 45 catches, which is a new Clemson record, broke Charlie Waters. Let's see if he looks for Butler. He sure is, and he throws it a mile downfield, and Butler can't get it. Running right with him was Leroy Felder, number 37 in white for Pittsburgh. And so Steve Fuller, who was flattened as he got the pass away, will come off the field. Difference and immediately the huddle with the offensive coordinators. Of course, you, you. Good gracious. He got hit there. That was the same type of pass that they've been, uh, Pittsburgh's been completing, except Pittsburgh's been pulling up on him. is away by Tony Masson and the fair catch called by Gordon Jones of Pittsburgh back at the 34 yard line of the Panthers. It was a 34 yard line, no return, with 2.31 to go in the third quarter. So, here comes Pittsburgh again now as uh, Kavanaugh will leave the sidelines after talking to Jackie Sherrill and let's see what they can do. With Elliot Walker is back in the backfield now, number 34, along with Fred Jacobs, number 44. Pittsburgh has just looked great all night long offensively. They've mixed up their plays, good play selection, keeping the Clemson defense off balance. Straight back he goes. The throw and pass is caught by Randy Rudershan. Rex Barn had a hand on the ball, but Rudershan just simply reached in there and took it down with it. Rudershan was just running a deep curl inside. Barn could not get to it. He waits and leads him inside and low where the defensive back cannot get to it. Barn just couldn't get there. Concentration. First down, 44. Pass over the middle. And out of the hands of Willie Jordan. Ball was right in the junior from Griffin, Georgia's stomach. And he just let it get away. He took his eyes off at the last minute to see which direction he wanted to run with it. It was so easy to catch right in his hand. He got careless. That's the worst throw and the only bad throw, really, I think, that Kavanaugh's had all night long. Watch the 51 go in there and pop Kavanaugh. Maybe he just took his eyes off of Kavanaugh's number 17 out of 25, 302 yards. Okay. Jacob will do it. He'll throw it again. One second. Goes short, sets up the screen. Now Walker's out there alone. He tumbles it down to about the 31, and that will be a first down, and Gordon Jones upfield through a big block. Get him past the 35-yard line, the 34, and get the first down. All in on the 31. You can do that on the new rule, block the downfield on a pass thrown behind the line of scrimmage. I'll tell you, Mr. Kavanaugh is closing in on Kim Hammond's 362-yard uh, record uh, set against Penn State in 1967. That was a 17-17 ball game with Penn State. Did here. 31 yard line. Kavanaugh hands it off inside this time. 
And there's not much there. Walker has caught five passes for 96 yards. He's carried 13 times on the ground for 49 yards. Pittsburgh has a lot of big play people. Backs, ends, tight ends. They can do it all. The receiving record here in the Gator Bowl is held by a fellow from Florida State named Belitnikov at 192 yards. Gavinaugh put it up. Goes to Willie Taylor on the sidelines, and he's all the way to the 10-yard line. He faked to the sideline, spun that way, and stayed in bounds. He's got quick feet. But Keith is successful with these passes because the wide receiver pushes downfield and convinces the defensive back he's going deep and when he breaks it off, he's wide open. And Kavanaugh is moving closer and closer to that passing yardage record of three. There he is, breaking deep and fooled the defensive back. Cut inside and was running free for a while. Just inside the 10. Call it the nine. First and goal to go. And it goes. I see him. It looks like Elliot Walker. It is. Senior out of Miami. Brought down by Bubba Brown for Clemson. The Jack, football sitting at the seventh. I think Jackie Sherrill's wondering what really would have happened if Kavanaugh not been injured in that first ball. Only if. If, if, if. Second down goal to go from the seventh. Jacobs to the five. And there the Tigers are racking up. Winding down to the end of the third quarter. So after three periods of play here in the Gator Bowl game, Pittsburgh leads Clemson 24 to 3. And our game will continue after this word from our local station. Wednesday, the Angels elbow their way into professional tennis. You ever thought about modeling racks? No. Right now I'm just concentrating on using one. <laughs> to find out who is eliminating top female players. Then it's a bad day at the racetrack when two old pony pals team up and horse nap a winner and hide him in Beretta's room. How come I smell horse? And somebody will kill for it. Beretta. Wednesday starting at 8, 7 Central and Mountain on ABC. Fifteen minutes of football to play in the Gator Bowl. Pittsburgh leading 24-3. They have it third down and goal to go from the Clemson Five. The pressure is building up on the Tigers. Kavanaugh loops it for Taylor, and it is incomplete. Lex Barnes is covering on the play. Both went up, bumped each other a little bit. But the official was right there, and no flag. No reason for it. Just a one-on-one -on -one defensive play, and the defensive back played it perfectly. Gavin all very wisely over through. Mark Schubert is on the field. He will try a field goal for Pittsburgh. Jackie Sherrill wanting to get three more, just in case the Clemson Tigers come on with one of those garrison finishes and scare him to death. It'll be a 21-yard field goal drive. From the right hash mark. The director Andy Sedaris gives you a good look at it. And it is square. And so the 21 yard field goal by Mark Schubert makes it a 27 to 3 ball game now. And the Tigers are up against it. Kavanaugh's best game so far was 17 out of 26 against Syracuse for 332 yards. He's already beaten that tonight, and you can see the uh, look at passing yardage, 334. And that is what, in three quarters. The coaches were right. They said if he's got a hot hand, they were going to keep throwing. They all one-sided, as anyone who's watching the game can see. Kavanaugh, Walker, and Jones are sensational football players. Two Eastern, one Central time. Join us as we put it up in the 44th annual Sugar Bowl game, the first meeting ever between the Alabama Crimson Tide, ranked third in the nation, and the Ohio State Buckeyes, ranked eighth in the nation. Bear Bryant and Woody Hayes. And 
two very good football teams having at it. With Bear Bryant, the third winning his coach in college football history, 272. Woody Hayes, fourth at 231 career victories. The kickoff goes into the end zone, and Willie Jordan's going to come out with it with a full head of steam. He gets out to about the 18, where he is knocked down by Glenn Meyer, number 42. So the hot man for Pittsburgh comes down the field and gets his target. You really take pride in these uh, special coverage teams. Oh, he got hit and he just released from the blocker and there he got it. Glenn will talk about that all winter. Yes. First down at the 18-yard line for Clemson. Steve Fuller sends Rick Weddington in motion. He hasn't been able to find Weddington much tonight on the forward pass. Heats on. And number 90, Gary Silvestre, defensive tackle, gets the quarterback. That is the fourth sack of Fuller tonight. Silvestre is the left tackle at the left of your screen. He just rushes inside the tackle, and the guard had pulled back to block the defensive end. Green, he's free and into the second, into the backfield of the tackle. Sylvester is up against Lacey Brumley, the 275-pound uh, defensive tackle from Kannapolis, North Carolina, and he just outquicked him. Loss is back to the 13, second down and 15. it up to the 15 for two yards as he ran all the way across the field but the Pittsburgh defensive flow would not let him turn up. In fact, great pursuit had the key. Yes, they do. Tremendous speed on the defensive team. I keep looking at 22 freshmen on the 80-man roster. I'd say they're here to stay. <laughs> In that top ten. Rick Tricano, who took over at quarterback, Kavanaugh was gone, led him to three big wins as the shot upfield, and it is complete to Jerry Butler. So Jerry Butler, who has broken Charlie Waters' pass catching record at Clipson, falls down another one. First down at the 31. I want the fans just to look and see how long he had to focus on the ball. Let's watch it. Just moments before the ball was there, and he had the leap to put his hands out and catch the ball. Sensational play. It's a good athlete. Three catches, 55 tonight for Mr. Butler. Pittsburgh will put the rush on Keith nearly every day. Yeah, they're really firing, aren't they? They're coming again. Steve Fuller running for his life. And he is caught short of the line of scrimmage by Randy Holloway. So Holloway, with help from Greg Meisner, running the quarterback to the sidelines at big number 70, got him. Yeah. Randy at 6'6", six, six, is a senior, 238 pounds, out of Sherrod, Pennsylvania. Everybody keeps talking about what a great pro he's going to be if he put on some weight. Randy says he eats everything in sight. <laughs> keep his weight up is to stay in the weight room. He does, it gets kind of tiresome after seven months of it. He showed his feet there. He ran to the Fuller down. Second down at 13. Fuller's pass to the sidelines. Butler again. And Jerry Skinner's out of bounds. Up around the 37. has got the moves of an outstanding receiver. He really forced deep, fake deep. I thought they piled on. Yeah, yeah. Personal foul called on the sidelines. The official marking the spot of the ball with his penalty flag. So have a look at it and see what happened. You can watch Butler break outside, and then the second man tackles him out. First man hits him out of bounds. So that's 15 yards, and that moves Clemson up to the Pittsburgh 48-yard line. The CCO is out of the lineup, and Ricky Jackson's in at a defensive end. Uh, Greg Meisner is in there replacing Hugh Green at a defensive end. Desmond Robinson now in at linebacker, replacing Al Chesley. With Lynn Thomas, number 47, in at defensive cornerback. And Willie Marsh in at the other cornerback in relief of J.C. Wilson. Fuller wanted to throw it, didn't have time to throw it. And he is decked at the 50-yard line for a loss of two yards on the play as Holloway and uh, Desmond Robinson and David Logan get into it. 
Holloway and Dave Logan, number 78, the nose guard, comes in behind and makes the play. And Phillips doesn't have, have a chance, Keith. They rolled their secondary over the top. They had three defenders on two receivers, rushing from the outside. No way. It's an awfully pretty smile, even though her team is down by 24. Second down and 12. to throw downfield, but his receiver down there fell down. The pass goes short to Goggins, who turns it up and gets it inside the 45 of Pittsburgh to the 44. He was looking, I think, for Weddington, but uh, Rick went downfield, slipped as he made his cut. He was open, too, but when he fell, Fuller very wisely looked for his alternate uh, receiver, which was the back player now the backfield. Well, today was Steve Fuller Day up in Spartanburg, South Carolina. I imagine the folks in Spartanburg are a bit wistful right now that the young man, which has captured the imagination of the community and the whole state of South Carolina, has had a rough night. Good thing. And he throws it, and it is intercepted. It is thrown literally right into the hands of Ricky Jackson, the defensive end, who has dropped off in the short zone. That is the third interception for Pittsburgh tonight. And the Panthers get the ball back with a 24-point lead. Taking freestyle performances by world figure skating champions tomorrow on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Also tomorrow, the World Trophy Freestyle Skiing Championships from Heavenly Valley, California. Flying through the air with skis on your feet. Folks doing things that I never dreamed that anybody could do and knowing full well I would never try. <laughs> Turnovers now, you see that Clemson has lost it three times on interceptions. And it's first down for the Panthers from their 34 yard line as Kavanaugh pops it and Jones grabs it and it's up to the 46 yard line. First down for Pittsburgh. Steve Fuller, though he has had a struggling night against the Panther defense, is now the all time Clemson total offense leader with 3,886 yards. He has 146 tonight. Throwing off the option play is practically impossible to cover because your cornerback has to support it quickly. Otherwise, he'll pitch it and they'll circle you for a long run. Matt Kavanaugh closing in on the passing record of Kim Hammond. He has 347 now. 362 is the record. He's going to put it up again. He's going to the left side. He's going deep for Taylor, and he throws it out of bounds. And Taylor had a lot of company that time. Going back with him was number 49, Eddie Getters, and number 18, Ogden Henderson. Rick Tracano, the freshman quarterback beginning to crank up for the fifth Panthers. We may see it. Did coaches say if he had gotten hurt right the week before the Notre Dame game, he might have been able to salvage that game for Pittsburgh. It's second down and ten. Getting some pressure. Gets away, and the pass is caught by Gordon Jones again. That's a 12-yard pickup. You can see Kavanaugh scram scramble just a little bit, and Jones comes back and catches the ball as the defenders are going in the other direction. A good receiver always comes back to meet the ball. He has the best shot at it. Watch him plant his foot. The ball is not on his way, so he works back to the pass. Expertly run. Matt Cavanaugh now with 359 yards. He needs four, and he completes a pass to Rudershan. And he may just have enough right there to have put himself in the Gator Bowl record book. I think he got four, didn't he? Yes, he got five. It'll be 364 yards. Matt Cavanaugh is now the all-time passing yardage record holder in the Gator Bowl game, breaking the record of Kim Hammond set back in 1967. Now, the pass receiving record uh, held by Ron Sellers of Florida State with 14. Gordon Jones now has caught 10 for 164 yards. <laughs> They send it inside this time with Jacobs carrying. Jones out of the game for the moment after making that last catch. Ron Sellers caught 14 passes and 
Fred Bolitnik now for the 192 yards. So Jones right there on the bench is well off of Bolitnikoff's record so far, but he's only four from tying uh, Ron Sellers. Clock running at 9.15 to play in the game. It is third down and five. Too long. Randy couldn't run it down, and he had cut right in front of uh, Eddie Gathers, a freshman out of Myrtle Beach, and he had a step on it. But Kavanaugh threw it deep and well beyond him. How, just how good can Kavanaugh be? It's just remarkable the ability that he has to throw and run the football. Right now, records for the throwers and the catchers. Matt Kavanaugh has broken the Pittsburgh school record of 345 yards set by Bobby Pestwick back in 1951 against Michigan State. The all-time bowl record, Ron Vanderkellen of Wisconsin, set it at 401 yards in the 1963 Rose Bowl game against USC. Kavanaugh put it up again, got all day to throw it. Now he starts to scramble a little and uh, takes a lick, and the pass is incomplete. Tony Williams. And a defensive tackle ran him down. And we got a little bit of a scuffle now as Rudershan comes across to say something to uh, Randy Scott. And the tempers have popped a little bit out on the field. Clemson obviously frustrated. Looks like they lost their temper on Cavanaugh. And then you can see how the Pittsburgh players feel about their quarterback. That's what they're over there complaining about. Protecting him. Continuing on the number of firsts that we have had in the uh, ball game to this point, as they march off the penalty here. Let's watch it to the right. I think you'll see Kavanaugh as he throws the ball. Watch 35 go over the top of him. The right of the corner can't quite see it. But you can see Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh did. He can't see it on the screen. Jump up and take a little quick swing at him. And so Clemson now comes up with a football on first down and. The football is sitting at the 38-yard line. They're on 38, and Steve Fuller hands the ball off inside to Lester Brown, the tailback, and he runs for a fairly decent game, about five yards, maybe six. But this is the first time in Steve Fuller's career in Clemson that he's been intercepted three times in a ball game. Two different occasions, he's been intercepted twice, but never three. Then he may very well have not faced the football game with quite the ability that Pittsburgh is showing him, particularly in the secondary. And trailing three or four touchdowns, having to throw. Pass is picked off by Bob Jury, his second interception of the night. And he is knocked out of bounds. That is the fourth interception of Fuller. And it was intended for Jury Butler. Jury just fielded it cleanly and took off down the sideline. And so Pittsburgh is right back down there and knocking on the door. 8.15 to play in the game. I really don't know what Jury was doing up that close. Uh, must have been in man to man coverage. Normally the Saints man would have been much deeper, but he must have known something. Oh. And Matt Cavanaugh is still in there as quarterback. Throws a screen to Elliot Walker. Uh oh, look out. Touchdown. And Walker hot dogging a little bit as he took it into the end zone, holding the ball in the face of the Clemson defender. That's a 15 yard penalty, Chief. I hope they call it. It should be. No place in college athletics or in any athletics. Walker taunting the uh, Clemson defense as a result of their having rough. The uh, Pittsburgh quarterback on the preceding offensive possession. He was taunting him before he crossed the goal line. They're probably talking about it right there. You can watch him in the middle of your screen, watch him show the ball in his face, about the six-yard line, then he's going to show it to number 12, 18. out of 34 and 387 yards, four touchdowns. Walker, six catches for 121 yards, and he has three touchdowns. Kick is up, and the kick is good. So with 8.02 play in the ball game, it's getting out of hand. 
again now as Pittsburgh is running away with it, 34-3 over Clemson. Bowl, Ohio State against Alabama. For the first time ever, Woody Hayes against Bear Bryant on ABC. Marion Woody on Monday at 2 Eastern time in the Sugar Bowl. Oh, that'll be fun. Elliot Walker's happy, but Elliot, I'm not sure that he did a very wise thing. I'm talking a little bit, taunting the Pittsburgh.